Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this procedural perovskite nanocrystalline metal-esque texture. And that's usually what I end up using this for. If you're not too familiar with materials, you may want to go and familiarize yourself with at least the basic aspects of the shader editor in terms of toggles for color, metallic, roughness, and normal. And that's just about it. If you're familiar with all of those concepts, then we're good to go. And if you're not, I'll try and explain as I move through this. So to begin, we're going to break down what this node actually looks like. I'm going to drag at the bottom of the screen once I have this little crosshair, and I'm going to change this window into a shader editor. You can see that when I select this material and zoom out and find it, that I've already made a node network for this specific material. And I have a few controls here. I can use value to bring this up or down, one being the default starting value, I can use saturation to control what color I want this set to. And you'll see that I have these specific colors chosen already. I can use the scale to make this a little bit finer or larger. And I can also use the randomness to bring this either into a perfect grid or into the current state that you see. To actually break down what's going on here, when I click this, you'll see all of the controls that are in place. And so the colors are being chosen here. The actual texture is being decided here and the control over aspects like how shiny this is or isn't are being afforded by this little setup, and then the actual mm, texture that you see is really coming from this little node right here. You can see that when it's all the way at zero, we have nothing. When it's all the way up at one, we have just a little bit of obvious visual interest. And we're gonna get started, take this new material that we just made and turn this into this and break down why I've done things in this approach and how you can use this for your figures. So let's get started. I'm gonna grab this new material, and you can see that anytime that you create a new material in Blender, it's just going to give you this basic principled BSDF. One thing that you really need for this tutorial is the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have it installed, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Node Wrangler. If this box is checked, we're good to go. Let's get started. Go ahead, make sure that you have this node selected. You'll do that by just moving it around. It's selected if you can move it. Hit Control T, and that's going to bring up all of these texture options. Now we don't actually want an image texture in this case, and we also don't want to be using the specific UV for texture coordinate. We're actually going to use object for now, and I'll show later why you might toggle between some of these options. So to get rid of this, we could either just delete it, or with it selected, we can hit Shift and S, and then it will switch type to, and we're going to switch type to a Voronoi. Now, Voronoi, if you want to see what it's actually doing, we're going to have to put this to the top of the stack and actually just remove this from our plane. This is what the Voronoi node is actually doing. It's creating a number of colors. You'll see there are different options. They do different things. Distance will be very, very different, but what we want right now is color. And so right away, you can see, well, that's quite a lot of colors, and that's not really what I'm after. I want a specific range of colors. So I'm going to box select these, drag them to the side, and hit Shift A to add in a converter color ramp. I'll put this right here and zooming in, I'll hit plus twice to add two little nodes. Then with my cursor, I can select or I can just toggle through each one down here. So I'm going to grab this one. That's fine. It's where I want it. And I'll make this a bright yellow. I'll grab this one and I'll make this kind of a darker color. Maybe we'll bring it down to just about there. In fact, I'll bring this one down as well in terms of how dark it is. Then I'll grab this one and again, I'll make this a brighter yellow. And for this last one, we'll keep this again, sort of into the realm of a darker yellow orange. I can also choose where I want these to be. So I'm going to actually move them to 0.75. And 0.5. In fact, I'm also going to grab this one and bring it to 0.25. You can see in color ramp that I have different options. So I have linear, constant, ease, B spline. These are all sort of variations of each other in terms of how much leeway they give you between, but we're going to stick with ease. Now, as some of you may note, or if you are familiar with perovskites, they tend to be black unless they are degrading, in which case they're yellow. And that's why I've chosen all the colors as yellow, because this is going to be a very handy thing for me if I want to animate this. So to get it to be black, I'm going to hit Shift A, add in a color, and that will be hue saturation. I'm going to click right here and put it down, and then I will connect the color into the color by just left clicking and dragging. And again, 
color into the color and left clicking and dragging. I can now actually change to any color that I really want through the hue slider and I'll just hold down shift and change that subtly, but the default value is 0.5 and I could make this black and white if I wanted to using a saturation value of zero. I can also use this value to either make it a little bit brighter or if I drag it down, I can make it darker. Now, if I bring it all the way down to zero, it's going to be pitch black and that's not what I want. I want just about one. And you can see already we have this kind of flat look. But you'll remember there are a bunch of extra nodes in here. And one of those was actually just duplicating this, bringing this into here, and then I could go ahead and now with a saturation value of zero, this will actually let me have this be black and white. So if I have Node Wrangler enabled, I can select any node, hit Control, Shift, and left click that node, and it will preview what this is actually showing me. So I'll keep that value at one. And now you can actually see, this is what we would be getting. I'm taking all that color and stripping it out, but the information is staying the same. So roughness values come between zero and one, and I'm actually going to plug the color into the roughness here, and then just re-enable this. So you can see now, the ones that are darker are shiny, and the ones that are brighter are matte. So this is in the final node. Here we go, these white parts are a little bit more matte, these dark parts are a little bit more shiny, and there you go. If I want a little bit more control over that, which is what I have in the original setup, I can shift A, add in a color, and invert. An invert is just going to let me flip those around. So now the white parts would be shiny, and now the black parts would be shiny. And that's just a nice little control for me to have. You can see again, if I want to preview that, I can do so here by just saying yes, all the way that way, all the way this way. And it's a little bit more subtle here just because the value is very high. So I do have some additional control. I can make that more or less obvious if I want to using the value slider. Great. However, there are a few things that we need to clear up. You'll notice that this is very flat, and the original texture that I showed you, there is a little bit more going on. For starters, I'm actually going to drag this metallic value all the way up to 1, just because I think it tends to look a little bit better that way. It's a bit more striking. But now it's really obvious that I don't have that texture, and you could easily get lost in this material. To add that texture, I'm going to bring in the normal value. And normal is basically just a way to fake real texture on a material. I'm not actually going to go ahead and model each of these and bring them out. This is actually just one flat plane. But the way that I'm going to fake that texture is with Shift A, Vector, Bump, and I'll bring this bump value here, and I'll connect this normal into this normal, and then I'll come all the way back to here, grab this color value, and drag that into the height. And you can see now we have some faked texture in there, and it's very obvious. If I have the normal engaged, this is what we have. If I take it off, look at how much more flat that is. So here we go just like that. And again, now I have a little bit more control over how rough or not I want this to be. I'm actually going to keep that just around here for now. And very, very important, because I'm using this saturation value, I could animate this if I wanted to. So let's bring that value. Let's actually start off by keeping the value at 0.1 where it is, saturation at zero. And if I want, we have this little timeline down here. I'm going to say, starting at frame one, right click on saturation, and insert a keyframe. Also on value, right click and insert a keyframe. I'm going to come ahead now to frame 60 and I'll bring these values up. I'll bring the saturation up to one and I'll bring the value up to one as well. Now I'll right click and insert keyframes on both of those. And if I bring my timeline all the way back to the beginning, you can see that if I go ahead and hit play, this is actually going to turn from black to yellow. And again, for those of you who are familiar with perovskites, they often degrade, at least in a basic methylammonium lead iodide case, into a yellow. And so I've now just created an easy way, just through here, of animating this in place. All of this is a texture, so really this is just a simple plane. If I were to remove the texture, you could see it's just white. And if I were to come back and remove the modifiers, you could see it's just one plane. Now, if you're interested in how I did all of this, I have another tutorial on making flexible bendable substrates. And that is another important thing that we're gonna to touch on with this texture and material. Just one last little detail. So we'll go back and grab the texture we just made. And now I wanna go through some of the differences in the coordinates here. So I'm going to come to the modifiers and you can see that I can actually bend or stretch this right now. I have it set to stretch. And if I go ahead and pull this factor out, you can see with object coordinates, this is actually maintaining the size of each of those individual crystals or domains, if you wanna call them that. So that's actually going to stretch, but everything's moving a little bit, but they're roughly staying the same size. If I was on the other two common coordinates, which are UV and generated, so let's go to generated, 
you would see that generated coordinates are actually going to stretch with the modifier. So when I have the, it at no stretch at all, basically here we go, and I can use the scale of the Voronoi to control if I want more or less. And then when I stretch out with the factor, you can see these are actually being elongated in that direction. So if that's something that you're looking for in terms of appearance, you can actually go ahead and do that. You also have another control in the Voronoi, which is the randomness value. And so if I bring that all the way down, you see now we actually have grids and you can really adapt this type of approach. And Voronoi is a very powerful node for creating all kinds of material textures. This being a sort of simple generic starting point. So the last thing that I'll do is show where you might use a texture like this. And I'm just going to close this window and come back into the main viewport. You can see this is my basic perovskite. And I have a collection down here called Full Device Stack that I prepared already. Now, all of these are one plane with a few modifiers added and then different materials. So you would have a glass substrate, some kind of transport layer, your photoactive perovskite, another transport layer, and an electrode. In this case, I chose gold. And just like that, with really not that much complexity, I've made this device stack. And this is a very, very common figure, certainly in the realm of photovoltaics and similarly in areas like battery construction or transistors. And I may make videos in the future breaking down exactly how I got this stack and what you can do with it. In any case, that's a bit of a long-winded explanation, but there we go. Without too much difficulty, a simple texture for making a perovskite. And right now I'm just going to actually go ahead, open the material window and really just slowly pan across so you could see and pause if you want to create something more or less exactly like this. As always, thanks for coming out. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use it to make some figures. And until next time, you have yourself a great old day.